dollars an hour I give up are my implicit costs, and my economic profit is now five dollars. Does that make sense? So, so I give up the ten dollars an hour at Cal Fire <coughs> to get fifteen dollars an hour here. From a accounting point of view, my salary is fifteen dollars an hour. But from an economic point of view, my salary is five dollars an hour because of the ten dollars an hour I'm giving up by not being. Yes, sir. I thought you said the explicit was the dollar amount. The explicit is the dollar amount, right. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, good point. Is, is he saying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but tell me if I'm hearing you, is that you're saying, well, there's dollars, you're talking about the dollars here, even though you're talking yeah. about, yeah. And, and it's just the example. What I'm giving up, you're right, you, you make a good point, is that I'm giving up the salary I would have earned at Cal Fire. Mm -hmm. you, you're right. So you're talking about just the salary portion, not the actual dollar amount about it. Yeah, okay. yeah. That, if that's okay. I mean, I see what I, you're I saying. See, I, yeah, that I wasn't see. a great example right. in that regard, but yeah, your point is taken. So when I come to Shasta College, my economic profit, you know, I, know, I know realize it's a salary, but my economic profit from being here is $5 an hour because I'm giving up the $10 an hour that I was earning as well by being here. Yes, ma'am. So from the economic point of view, your the cost is the ten dollars, but then what would your explicit cost be? Okay, from from an she said from an accounting point of view? From an accounting From an economic point of view? Okay, so the explicit costs are the dollars. Right? Is that right? Oh, in this, in this example would be like um, the cost of production, like it costs some... Um, like gas? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Five dollars to make a, a pen, you know, the input costs, if there's three dollars in metal and two dollars in ink and stuff like that. Those are tangible dollars and cents costs. Those are the explicit costs. The implicit costs are the opportunity costs. And now, kind of get away from what you said, just so there's no confusion, is that when I'm on a production line, when I make stuff, every day I come in, I, I realize there's variances that you're, you're locked into. I mean, you can't just necessarily, well, today I'll make ice cream, and tomorrow I'll make pens, and the day after that I'll make, you know, computers. You can't do that. But during, you know, like, as a company, I can come in and there's variances into what I make. And there's an, here's an example out of the book, is that I come in and have a production line and I make stuff, right? And I make, my two products are, Umbrellas and sunglasses, and just assume that the factors that go into those are pretty similar, you know, metal, um, whatever, plastic, whatever. And then I go in today, and I look at the weather, and I say, well, today we're going to make umbrellas. And what I forego are the, the cost of making the sunglasses. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm giving up sunglasses to make umbrellas today. And hopefully, based on the revenue that I'll generate, which we haven't talked about yet, but eventually that will be a good decision. Tomorrow, if the sun is shining, I may switch over, you know, switch a few things here and there, and I'll make sunglasses. And what I give up is the <coughs> costs of making the umbrellas. Does that make sense? And I'm trying to make the best decision I can each day based on the circumstances. Clear?
You know, I, I give that up to be here at Shasta College. And is that worth something? Yeah, I mean, something. No, and it's hard to say, is it worth $20? Well, I, I don't really know about that, you know, because you get things from being here, too, you know what I mean? But, yeah, so, yeah. So, no, it's, it's just, it's all about opportunity costs, what you're giving up. And then and think about when I make a decision, the, the profit that I'm gleaning from doing that has to do with the costs that I'm putting into it, what I'm giving up to do that. Cecil, you have, I don't mean to pick on you, but you have an interesting example right now with your truck, right? Because you, you're going to, you have to go to work, or you want to go to work, but you have to deal with, with your truck, right? And so so for you to go to work, you're going to give up the, the opportunity to fix your truck. So your cost of going to work just went way up. See what I'm saying? Good. So, so the, you make some lessons instead of umbrellas, so the co cost of making umbrellas you give up, but you also give up the revenue. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what you're doing is you're trying to produce based on what, you know, obviously is a smart decision today is going to be umbrellas, right? You know, and then tomorrow maybe it'll be sunglasses. You know, we'll switch some mechanism in our process and we'll make sunglasses tomorrow based on the weather. And, and sometimes we don't make the right decision. If I give up a job at Cal Fire that pays $20 an hour and I come here and get paid, excuse me, get paid 15 then I'm taking an economic hit, even though I still am getting an economic profit of $15. You see what I mean? So the production function, so a couple questions on that, just be ready for it. The production function, we started this already. Um, we did the tennis ball, I'll show you how you guys did. You guys had an interesting um, curve. You guys okay back there? Because you've been talking pretty much the whole time. You all right?
an unsolved case. He's like, yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> what? What's the deal with that? Uh, what do you mean? That must have been really short. The, the distance? Yeah, uh, this is an ITV class, so that was probably, you know, the distance was relatively short. Oh, okay. And, and you can see I was doing one student at a time here. Uh, yeah. um, I, I try to start with two because I don't want to embarrass anybody. You know, I don't want to get, you know, one poor student up here, you know, in front of all of his colleagues or her colleagues going, oh, my gosh, you know, it can get kind of nerve-wracking. So I try to start with two, but you can tell this is older. I live and learn. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's kind of how it's gone. Diminishing marginal product. Okay. Here we go. This is probably the most difficult part of the class, at least one of them, I should say. Hang in there. Okay, we're going to start talking about costs, and there's three costs that you need to know about. Um, so there's much uh, production function, there's that. Any questions about that, about diminishing margin products? So the property whereby as you add additional input, you get additional output, but at a decreasing rate. And the most common variable to add or subtract is labor because it's easy to add a worker. It's harder to add a pizza oven or a, a new shop, you know, something like that. Uh, so as you add workers, your production function gets flatter. Everybody cool with that? Any questions? Um, and then the relation, the production comes, the production function is the relationship between input and output. All right, and then from that we can derive the total cost curve. And the total cost curve is the relationship between input and output. All right, so, so now we've got two things going. The production function, which is the relationship between input and output. And now we're looking at total cost curve, which is the relationship between input and cost. So there's two things happening now. And what, I mean, in a second we'll put all three together. It'll be one thing. The production function, well, the production, the, the production function curve is the relationship between input and output. Yeah. So if we add two workers, we get like 10 units, and we add another worker, and we get an additional five units total, 15. The input and cost. I'm That's sorry. The total cost curve. Yeah, the total cost curve is the relationship between cost and input. And so as we, <clears throat> there's two costs, and we're going to talk about it in one second, but there's two costs that we're going to worry about right now, and that's the variable and the fixed cost. There's some costs too, but we'll get into that later. So we have a fixed cost in our factory, which is the rent and the you know the payment on our equipment, whatever. So there's there's the fixed cost, and that doesn't change if we make one or, or a thousand units of pizza. It's always the same. Then we have the variable cost, which is the cost that increases as we add input, meaning mostly. So, so bear with me once I haven't got to that. Hold on one second. <coughs> okay, so now we're going to do a cost curve. Cost production functions start out steep and they get flatter, which is caused by diminishing marginal product. Cost curves tend to start out flat and they get steeper because of diminishing marginal product. And give me one second here. The total cost curve relationship between input and output. Snooze button to donate money to your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, That's 
awesome. A charity that you hate or something. Oh, you're right. I like that a lot. That's a great, what a great incentive. That's perfect. I like that. There's also a good sense, like a little electronic, like, fall or something. Yeah. When you have our pockets off, it falls off their rolls. And it little motorized. I've seen that in the car. Why did you torture me or something? Okay, um, so here we go. The, the total cost curve um, is the curve at the end. And um, let, let me go through this. Somebody had said we'd like to go through one, one more time. So let me go through it just to make sure everybody's up to speed. And then I'll graphically show you the total cost curve. And then we'll get into the hard part. Um, okay, so number, this is a, what is it, cookies. Okay, we have zero workers, zero output. No marginal product of labor, so there's zero work, there's no output. So the cost of the factory, the fixed cost, that doesn't change. Whether we make zero or 100, it's always the same. Zero labor costs, and then the total cost is um, $30. Okay, the next day we hire one worker. Marginal product, or, or the total product, really, because it's just one worker, is going to be 50. So marginal product is 50. Total cost of the factory is unchanged. The labor cost is, for one person, $10 a day total cost. Um, well, I'll do like one more. So we, the next year we hired two workers. Sarah pointed out at one point that this would probably turn into an average, but we'll keep it linear for now. Just keep it per worker. This makes it easier. All right, so the second worker contributes an additional 40 units of output. All right, so there's their marginal product. The total is now 90. Um, fixed cost doesn't change. Cost of two workers is 20. Total cost is 50. Everybody okay? All right, so as we add workers, we get the cost per unit is going up. And the reason is, and I would write this down, and the same reason that production functions get flatter at the top is because of diminishing marginal product. All right? And, and maybe make a sentence here. I'm, I'm kind of making this up as I go. But th there, there's two effects that happen, is that, that production functions as you add workers, they start off very steep and they get flatter and flatter due to diminishing marginal product. That's our tennis ball. The cost curves start off very flat and they get steeper and steeper, meaning that each unit costs more and more and more. And the reason for that is also diminishing marginal product. Right? So be ready to define diminishing marginal product. What is diminishing marginal product? It's the property whereby as you add more input, you get less, sorry, you get more output but at a decreasing rate. What causes it? And being able to explain that will come in handy. So what causes diminishing marginal product? And it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, you don't have to have some big scientific explanation. What causes diminishing marginal product? Are you asking? Yeah. I didn't mean to sound like a test either. No. Yeah. <laughs> Answer <Exactly>. the question. <laughs> Yeah, basically, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. But you know, in a layman's terms, what causes it? Just complications. Yeah, it gets it gets you start bumping into each other. You start having to compete for pizza ovens or for the good apples at the bottom of the orchard. You know, you, you start having to um, wait to put a pizza in or wait to get on the right line in the restaurant, whatever. It just takes more time, right? Yeah. It, it, so each individual is contributing. That's why each person had to touch each tennis ball or else why would I hire you? Yeah. Right, so each person is contributing, but the efficiency by which you know somebody's moving a tennis ball from point A to point B is diminished because each person has to go through that process. And so, so as a result, in layman's terms, the reason that we have diminishing marginal product is we're competing for resources. It's inefficiency. Okay? And, and that's really key. And so that's really important. I hope everybody's clear on that. Um, so here's the total cost curve, and, and again, it's all about per unit, so, ready? Yes, sir. So, just to, like, clarify, could, it, could I use an example of, like, Subway, when you go in there, and one person makes a sandwich, and they person tries to help you, but they also get caught up by the other sandwiches, and they're trying to make them look and start bumping at each other. Perfect. That's, a, that's like, the quintessential example. Um, I don't, I don't know or care, and I'm not saying anything good or bad, but I, I've always noticed that when you're in the cafeteria over here, in our commons over here, that when there's um, more than, I, I don't want to pick people out or anything, but there, especially, you know, some people in particular, when they get in there to help, all of a sudden everything just bogs down, you know, 
and, it, and it's it, it maybe even coming out technically a little bit faster, but it's going through so many extra steps, you know. It's like I just want a grilled cheese sandwich, you know. You don't have to slap it, you know. Just cook it and give it to me. <laughs> you know? But there's but there's all these additional, I'm, I'm, you know, people proving their worth by getting involved when they really don't mean to be there, you know. Um, okay, so here's the cost curve. Total cost curves start off flat, get steeper um, as we increase productivity due to diminishing margin of product. Um, and so here's worker number one, the total cost is $30, which is represented, which is caused by what? What's that $30 cost? Factory. Wages. Factory, right, fixed cost, right? And that doesn't change if we make a million or zero or whatever, that factory cost will always be there, right? So that we hire one worker, costs us 10 bucks, and the productivity jumps to 50. Right. Next time around, we hire two workers. That second worker contributes an additional, uh, beg your pardon, costs us an additional ten dollars and contributes another forty units of output. Third worker contributes another thirty, costs us another ten. Next one uh, contributes another twenty, costs us another ten. And there comes a point, and here's what we're getting at eventually, is that that curve will start to bend back on itself. Right. So the cost curve will start to bend back on itself, and that's a problem. And we're going to talk about. So what, when at, at that point do you like reduce your workers? Do you reduce how much you're? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Then, then you're paying more to hire. To, you're basically less. just backtracking. You could have. Yeah, you're you're, you're hiring people to hurt your productivity. Yeah. And and there's actually a formula that we're going to talk about that you can take with you to your own place of business. And there's a formula that says the value of the marginal product of labor is equal to the wage. And what that means, and we haven't done revenue yet. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But if, let's, so each person is contributing, you know, 50, 40, 30, 20 cookies. Well, what it all boils down to is how much does each cookie cost? To, and when, when they sell the cookie, how much of revenue are we generating from each person's contribution? And in a competitive industry, you're going to keep hiring people until the last person that you hire just makes enough cookies, in this case, to pay their wage. Then you're maximizing your output. Follow? And so, so I'm going to keep hiring workers until the last person I hire makes enough money to pay that last ten dollars that they cost me. At that point, I'm maximizing my output, and as a competitive firm, I'm I'm doing as good as I can. I'm maximizing my profit. We'll talk about that in a minute, or coming classes. So far, so good. Um, okay, so there's two costs that we got to talk about. The, the fixed cost and variable costs, um, well, there's actually, let me back up. Let me, there, there's, there's actually four costs, but we'll start with these two. Sorry, I kind of missed said that. All right, so we have fixed and variable costs. That's easy. So fixed costs are costs that are, don't change with output, um, you know, the rent, uh, uh, machinery costs, you know, stuff like that. So they don't change if you make one or a million output, uh, you know, cookies, the, the fixed cost is always the same. Right. The variable costs are the cost that change with output, which would be, in our case, labor. And, and not always, but by and large, labor is really the variable cost in the world, really. Because everything else is, in the long run, it's variable, yeah, but in the short run, you know, you can't contract, you can't make a subway restaurant disappear for a day. You know what I mean? It's always there, it's, that cost is going to be there tomorrow and the day after. And, and over a year, yeah, you could build a new subway, sure. But but day in and day out, the variable cost is labor. And there's, uh, this is application on the exam, by the way. So there, students have a lot of trouble with this. And the answer is all about output. Students, for some reason, don't like this question and its application. And you know, uh, an example of a fixed cost is blah, blah, blah. And an example of a variable cost is blah, blah, blah. And it's all about, it, it, the output goes up and the cost change. Is this on like a day-to-day -day basis or is this more of like a general? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I always think of it in terms of like, you know, in the short run this week, I always think like Subway back to your colleague's example. I mean, I think they got it pretty well nailed down. But, you know, during the, I don't know, just kind of making 
this up, but like the first week of school or so way up here on the lake, they, they, maybe they have to get somebody on call, you know, just, just for a couple of weeks because we don't really know what that, you know, if the students are going to come here or not this semester. We just don't know. There's no way to predict that. Um, you know, it's all dependent on does Starbucks have a sale next door and that drives the subway and we want somebody who lives nearby that can come in and bail us out and get in on the line. You know? So I'd say in the really short run today, it's probably pretty well fixed, but in a week by week basis, maybe not. Um, okay, some acronyms. This will just make your life easier. Dumb road. Are we going to deal with mixed cost off? Like partially variable, partially variable? Example. Um, I was thinking about like accounting, because it's just accounting, and we did variable cost, fix, fixed cost. And What's a mixed cost? Um, the example we gave was like, I think it was like, like an energy bill, like a utility bill. Like, I think part of it is fixed, like you have to pay that every month, but then the other part, like yeah. the fees and stuff. Yeah. I always. I always break it down. I'm not to, I'm sure if that's the way they do it there, then that's, I always think of electric bills as being not mixed, but part of both, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I've never heard the term mixed cost before, but. He's right. talking about like within them, when you have a, an electric bill, like you have like a $15 yeah. processing fee, yeah. and then you have right. your variable yeah. gas bill because you, right. it changes. Or, or if you're not in there, there's always this low level $10 mm -hmm. charge for just keeping the power to the. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then and then you come in and start business and then your electric cost goes to ninety dollars. And I always see it as well, ten of that is fixed and eighty yeah. of that yeah. is fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um okay, so some just acronyms to make it easy. So you have um variable cost, fixed cost, or well total variable cost, total fixed cost, and total cost. All right, here we go. Ready? Oh, total cost, total fixed.
Okay, so I get that. So you, you could potentially see your variable costs. You know, in for the accountants, it's the relevant range. You know, when you hit that relevant range where you get the economies of scale. For now, it's not that we discount it, it's just that I exclude it because it just adds another confusing element to the graph. So I'm just taking it out for right now. All right, so the next day or whatever, you come in, you make a second glass of lemonade. And this is, um, make sure everybody sees this, the variable cost for two glasses of lemonade, 80 cents. Um, variable cost for three glasses of lemonade is um, $1.50. All right, does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? So, and you already know the answer to this. Why is the cost rising as we add more units of output? Why is the variable cost rising? Why is the variable cost rising as we add more units of output? And we've already talked about it. Very good. Say it again? More labor. More labor? Um, yeah, arguably. Uh, no, it's not, that's not like an incorrect answer at all. I mean, I could apply that. I'm looking for something more specific. We've already talked about it. If you don't know the answer, say it. Yeah, right, right. So you're absolutely right. And so what causes it that as I make more units of output, each one costs me more and more and more? What, what's the profit? Diminishing marginal product. Same thing. So as we make more units of output, each unit is costing me more and more and more. And then the total cost curve starts to bow up. Same principle here. I know with lemonade, it's like kind of hard to fathom that. I, I get that. But just play along. So as you add more units of output, your variable cost is increasing, but at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. Clear? Yes, sir. So, just a question offhand. How does, I saw a commercial last night for Starbucks, and they showed everyone around the world with the Starbucks cup. So how do they pull off so well when they have such a high variable cost? So, so I'm sorry. So, everybody in the commercial had a cup? Yeah, and they were in locations around the world. Got it. You know, so that tells me that they probably have a really high variable cost. Let me get through 